Good Friday morning. My name is Jerry Miller. Welcome to Real Talk. This is an insider's guide to real estate, life, and the pursuit of happiness on the I Love Seville Network. The show airs Tuesdays and Fridays at 10.15 in the morning. We're live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world, thanks to the Yes Team Realtors, trusted advisors in the game, Keith and Jonas Smith of the Yes Team Realtors. Today's show, absolutely fantastic. Dr. Paul Harris will join us in T minus four and a half minutes. Phenomenal individual. Judah Wickhauer is our director, my friend Judah, studio camera, to welcome the distinguished gentleman to the show, Keith Smith. Hello, my friend. Good morning, sir. I love the beard, man. Thank you. Looks good on you. Thank you. It's a little scratchy. The wife's not a huge fan, but well, thank you. That comes a long way. How have you managed um, a mustache your entire life with marriage? Um, well, because it can be scratchy. You'll have to ask my wife that. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, we'll ask you. you uh, uh, all I know, all I get told is not to shave it off. So there so, you go. Well, there it's you so go. important. You put it on the mask. I put it on the mask, man. I've had this since this mustache since 1985. So um, it ain't coming off. I don't. I don't think my children. Or my wife. Well, my wife seen me without a mustache, but I know my children never. Your two have. daughters have never seen you without never a mustache. Never seen me without a mustache. Wow. Well, no. you wear it well, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have Dr. Paul Harris we coming do. up. Before we do, Juneteenth. Yeah. Very important to you. Yeah. So, um, Jude, if you don't mind putting the intro slide up on it. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm definitely going to ask Paul's uh, 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 opinion on this and feedback on it. I'd love to hear it. But, uh, you know, today is uh, basically it's Emancipation Day, right? And uh, it is not a national holiday, and it should be. It's a state holiday. I believe the governor on Thursday or Tuesday, I can't remember which day it was, made it a, a holiday for state employees. It is actually not a state holiday either. Um, so, you know, anything we can do on this show to help get that going in the right direction, we will. Um, there's a, um, a couple of, of change.org uh, petitions going out there. I'd encourage everybody to go out there and find it and sign it. And it, this, uh, this should be a national holiday. And the fact that it's not is, is frankly... Uh, Offensive. I agree. Honest, How about honest. a little background? Yeah, so um, it's interesting. I, 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 oop, I just don't have my mask on, um, and I was hoping to, to talk to the good doctor a little bit about this. Um, but it was started. Hold on a second. Let me make sure I get my notes right. I'm, I'm thumbing through this thing, and I just don't want to get this wrong. Uh, it started in June 19th of 1865, and what happened here was um, the Emancipation Proclamation was uh, created by President Lincoln two and a half years before. And I've got a copy here. If you have never read that, read that, do yourself a favor, read it. It's typical Lincoln, um, short and to the point, kind of like Gettysburg Address, but it's pretty impactful. But the basic story of it is this General uh, Granger went out to Galveston, Texas, and basically told everybody in Texas, oh, by the way, you lost the Civil War, and uh, slavery is over, and there was this big celebration, and it just kind of been going on since since then, and uh, it's uh, it just needs to be a formal celebration. I mean, I'll just say it publicly, uh, you know, it should be along the level of July 4th. It 4th should of be July. 4th yeah. of July, um, that kind of thing. So it's my personal opinion. I figured I'd take this soapbox to push it out there. So um, hopefully Dr. Harris may have some comments on it. And if anybody comes in on the feed, I'd love to do it. But uh, let's see what we can do to make this a national, first of all, a state holiday. Let's start small, right? And then uh, for sure, a national holiday. Well said. Well said from the distinguished gentleman, Keith Smith. Give um, Roy Wheeler um, a little bit of attention here as I get Paul yeah, Harris on the line. Yeah. Judah, we're Skyping Paul Harris now. So we talk about this all the time, uh, love Michael Guthrie, you know, to be honest with you, if I didn't know Michael Guthrie, I wouldn't know Dr. Harris, because Michael introduced us to it, and, you know, we just become very close friends, so, uh, you know, Michael and Roy Real are Realty, you know, there's basically two ways you do this business, right, transactional, relational, and they're all about relational stuff, and, and th this is a perfect example of building relationships, uh, 
uh, I think the world of the gentleman we're about ready to speak to. I, I, I do. I do as well. We have Dr. Paul Harris on the line, Judah Wickhauer. If I can get a green light from you to welcome Dr. Harris to the show, we do get the green light now. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. Um, good morning. Um, good morning. Thank you kindly for being a part of this program. How are you, sir? What's going on? Doing, doing great. Good to see you. Sorry about the uh, internet faux pas the other day. Not sure what was happening on my end on that front, but uh, good to be back. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you back. I love the background um, over um, his, his shoulders there. I like the book that is, looks like it's Victory Rest with the Lord right there. Yeah. Um, when, we, when we left you last, I'm going to pass you here to Keith. We were talking about reconciliation. Um, yeah. And you were dropping knowledge bombs for us on reconciliation. I'm kind of putting you on the spot because it's been about three uh -huh. days since you come on the show. And you've uh, been a little right. busy. And you've been really <laughs> you've busy, You've been a little Paul. busy. You uh, know, <laughs> Mr. National Television. <laughs> so so we need, we, you know, what about his beard? What do you think? Oh, yeah, Paul, my wife doesn't like the beard. We need a comment on his beard. On the on the beard that's coming in, is that what I'm looking at? <laughs> Paul Harris. <laughs> Paul's throwing some shade right there. I love that from P. Harris. <laughs> so Paul, this, the, the virtual high five, man. That, yeah, that, that was real. That, that, went, that was done well. So where, where we left left off with our little internet um, issues we had was I was asking you a question about you know in in your you know, in Victory, uh, Charlottesville, it's recognition, rec recognition, excuse me, the mask, to God and one another. And I really was like trying to get your feed on to one another, right? So we're, we're, we're going through what we're going through in this country, right? Today's Juneteenth, yeah. uh, Juneteenth, right? Which, in my opinion, should be a national holiday. That, you know, that's my soapbox I'm going to get on. Um, so how do we reconcile to one another? And you were throwing some knowledge bombs, which I'm asking you to go back and remember. But if you can, yeah. it's all on you, brother. So if you can give us some, some knowledge bombs, we'd appreciate it. I don't know about any knowledge bombs. I think I may have started with, with uh, thanking you guys for what you do. So oh. I think that's appropriate to say again. Thank you. Because so much of it is about just engagement and attention and time and effort and energy over a sustained period of time. And, uh, and that's what you guys do all the time. You give attention to important issues, you dialogue, you bring people into that conversation. And um, so, yeah, when I think of reconciliation, I think labor, <laughs> I think time, I think energy, I think uh, painful, to be quite honest, difficult. Um, I think marathon, I think, um, you know, to, 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 to speak to uh, my faith a bit, when I think of what reconciled us to God, that took, that took death, <laughs> you know, that took Jesus dying for us, and, it, and which was an act of justice, really, because our sins warranted that. And so I, when I see, like, when I think about, rather, horizontal reconciliation with each other, Keith, um, I think, gosh. If it took justice to kind of be the bridge over which there, there was a gap between us and God, um, it's going to be some justice that, that lays a particular bridge across the gaps that divide us here. And that looks differently depending on what area we're talking about. But, um, but I, I believe it, it begins with that. And then there's a place for, for, for us to walk across to then engage and do the difficult work of sitting with each other and hearing each other and listening to each other and um, bearing with each other, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, marathon is the word that always comes to mind. I think it's a sustained engagement over a long period of time. So we, we talk, been talking about this all month on the show. Listen, right? Listen yeah. to, listen to what somebody actually has to say, learn from that person. And then, you know, I, I shortened it a little bit. I said act, right? So act. So, yeah. you know, as you said, sh cross this bridge. And, and what you do, and hopefully what we are trying to do, I know this is a real estate show and we're supposed to be talking about real estate, but I just felt the passion that, you know, particularly today, right, we just needed to talk about, you know, crossing these bridges and reaching across the, the, the aisle and right now virtually, yeah. right? Can't do it yeah. physically, uh, but just reaching across the aisle and say, hey, man, I'm here for you. What can I do to help? And um, so, you know, I, I know you, we don't want to get in the weeds about some of the work stuff that you got going on, but I, I do want to ask a question from my perspective, and this is just Keith and Paul having a conversation with a bunch of people watching. 
just happened yeah. to be. Uh, so I come from a very different world. I don't come from an academia world, right? So it's very difficult for me to understand this and maybe a lot of people watching this. So at a high level, I don't even, what is tenure? I don't understand what that is. What, what, what does it mean? What's the process? I, I don't want to get into right, wrong, and you know my personal feelings, right? Should have happened a long time I ago. I love Paul Harris. Right? But I what, love Paul but Harris. What, but what is it? Us n novices don't know what it is. At least I don't anyway. Is that a great yeah, question? What's that? I said, is that a, if you don't want to answer it, I'm cool with that too. No, no, I, I don't mind. I mean, firstly, thanks. Thanks for, uh, for supporting and, sure. and for everybody who's kind of reached out and connected. Sure. Uh, it's certainly another opportunity for growth as, as we try to frame well, it's flat the challenges out. in our, it's flat out wrong in our life. It's flat out uh, wrong. But, but, um, but no tenure for, for academic tenure is, is, um, is it's, it's the goal for many, for many academics, not everyone, uh, that you have non-tenure track and tenure track faculty, but um, tenure, in, in, in essence, is a job for life, right? You get an appointment without term. Uh, it provides for the academic, uh, academic freedom, if you will, to say what, what he or she uh, wants to say as it relates to their research agenda and, um, and you know, without fear of retribution, et cetera. So it's, it's, um, it's something we need in terms of pushing knowledge forward. Many times you have to push back on things for that to, to, to occur and for change to happen, and, and so... Um, Tenure, tenure facilitates that process for academics. So we we started talking about with Juneteenth about change, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It sounds like tenure helps that process at the university level. Is that helps change? It helps impact. Does that make sense? I mean, a lot of things do. Yeah, okay. and, and you know, certainly it's uh, like in your field. I'm not sure what it would look like for you to sort of do what you do and then get, get a certain, uh, uh, or reach a certain goal. But it's really, you know, it's really simple, Paul. I get, I get to do a webcast show and talk <laughs> to you. There, there you go. go. That, there it, you it, go. it doesn't get any better you than this. The pinnacle, Paul. I, I, man, I'm, that's I did. I, it doesn't there. get any higher for me. I got no, you've got tenure. You're good. I'm good. I got <laughs> it. Man. I got it, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so now it's, it's, it, it, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's interesting space. And, um, but yeah, to the reconciliation point, I, I just, it's hard for me not to, even in thinking about Juneteenth, right, and, and how, you know, that so many thoughts come to my mind. That came two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, for one, uh, and, and you may even see T-shirts that, that say free-ish since 1865 because there's still yet more to, to be done. But uh, justice is a big part of that, and, and certainly in the individual spaces of, uh, you know, the, the, the uh different cases that have been coming across national news, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Maude Arbery, and others, Richard Brooks recently, but even more broadly, right? We, we touched on redlining sure. uh, uh, last time or, you know, mass incarceration, the achievement gap, health disparity. There's, there's justice on these broader, more systemic scales that will help facilitate reconciliation. And so in addition to the kind acts and the things that I know Keith, you're about big time, um, I think there's also these attention to the sort of, pervasive injustices that persist and in many ways we uphold whether unintentionally or intentionally uh, that marginalize some and privilege others and so those those are those are deserving of attention and and will help the reconciliation process for sure i can't think of anybody better to have this conversation with than you um you know i mean i'm just going to call it like it is we've been here before we've done this this before mm -hmm. right do you feel that this is different? Do you feel we're actually going to get somewhere with this this time? Do I feel it's different? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm a hope-filled sure. individual by, by, by nature, and that it stems from my faith, sure. uh, of course. And so I'm always going to see uh, sort of where we come from and where we still need to go. So is this different? You know, you know in some ways, I think maybe more people are listening. Mm -hmm. um, I think the time will tell whether or not uh, that same energy and passion is here when the headlines are gone. Mm -hmm. uh, because the reality is the crises are still here when the headlines are gone. Uh, there were no headlines when we started the church. You know, there were no headlines uh, when many academics, to speak to some of my work there, uh, have been writing about this for years. Um, and, and so similarly, I think that will be a better testament to whether or not we're going somewhere, if we're still engaging when the headlines are gone. We're, we're the same 
people, right? You know, we're we're optimists yeah. by by nature. Our faith yeah. leads us uh, along what paths that we take in lives. Uh, I just have a I don't know. Uh, it just feels that this actually might get some traction this time. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I think hopefully we're contributing to that conversation and contributing to that to that yeah. path. Um, you know, you and I come from the same part of the world. We've seen this before, right? And yeah different decades and uh i i just think this medium that we're currently talking to you on yeah. at some point is a super positive thing and sometimes not so much right uh yeah but uh, so we're going to take this and use this for good and spread some good positive news out and of course talk real estate and maybe sell a few houses yeah he wants a sale baby so I sell a, a few sale, houses baby. well it, 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 sell a few houses i'm done buying houses i'm done buying houses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> for now, <laughs> for now anyway. that wasn't a sales pitch okay maybe it was yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna pass you over uh my cohort here has a couple of questions and then i'll wrap up paul i got a question right. for you um my yeah. favorite role in life and my role that I most struggle with in life is being a dad to a two-year-old, um, yeah. one dad to another. What kind of real conversations did you have with your kids about what's going on now, or do you not have that conversation? I'm just curious. Oh, man. So, Jerry, we're, we can learn together because I'm figuring it out, literally, right? Like, who, who, who's written a manual on daddying? <laughs> um, um, and, uh, so every day I think my wife and I, we were talking about what it looks like to both protect them, but also have them be aware. Um, and probably one of the harder initial conversations we had was that after August 11 and 12, um, when we didn't, you know, when, when everything took place and that was literally where my wife had just taken our daughter for some ice cream and, and she had written about that in a, a form of peace. So how do we talk about it? Yeah, I, I, I think we just try to be careful so as not to scar, but at the same time, careful to say, this is reality. It has been reality. And here's mom and dad's perspective on such reality. And, uh, which is hope filled, but it's also grounded in some <laughs> truth about, about where things are. And so there's a lot of bibliotherapy in this house. <laughs> you know, they're reading about folks from the past who resisted and persisted and, uh, and overcame. And so in, in that way, we're hoping to facilitate their empowerment to do the same um, while also kind of making sure they're not naive to, to the fact that everybody's not for them and that policies are not necessarily for them. And, and, uh, and then just be as open as we can about our struggles with it, but also our triumphs within it as well. I don't know that we're doing a good job with that, Jerry. How they <laughs> respond, how they respond. Kids are, kids are impressive. I mean, I feel like what I've seen, and my kid's like two and change, I like every time I give him like um, a little bit more like rope or a little more like opportunity to show something, dude rises to the occasion and shows something. Sometimes I'm just like, I got to get out of that mindset that this kid's two and I got to be like, let's see what he can do. Um, because every yeah. time I give him a shot, he, most of the time, he, I mean, he's two, he, he does something cool. How, how do they respond? Yeah, you know what's, what's, what's interesting, not funny at all, actually, but interesting is they have examples from their own lives, which is sad and awful, right? But the more we talk about it or the more they read about Fannie Lou Hamer or whomever you know, it is that we're talking about, they'll start bringing up examples of, of instances in their own engagements that sounds familiar. And, and as they do, I think, wow, that. Let's talk more about that. What was going on? And we get to unpack it. So um, they're engaged in ways that I don't know I, that I was at that age. Um, but then again, you know, I, I think it was a matter of engaging them to see just how, how, how uh, aware they are actually of it. So, uh, so a lot of why questions from them. <laughs> Many questions we can't answer, but, but I appreciate nonetheless. How about uh, some Taylor Harris love? Oh, I mean, yeah. she's been, oh. dude, she has been dynamic. Oh, yeah. I mean, she has been like <laughs> um, an influencer, a networker, a leader. I mean, she's a hell of a writer, as everybody knows. I mean, she has been, your lady, your better half has been dynamic over the last, like, what, two weeks or so? I've been so impressed. Yeah. I mean, she, if she wanted to, could be a CEO <laughs> of an advertising agency or a digital media company with what she is doing on social media. I am so impressed dude with taylor 
Yeah, she's the bomb. I told you I married her. Yeah, you outkicked her coverage. Me too. I told you, man. Uh, that's that's a given. 14 years of putting up with me. She's she's uh, she's the real MVP for sure. Uh, amazing human being, and 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 then happens to be a brilliant writer on top of it. And uh, for whatever reason, she loves her husband, and um, and loves acting justly and walking humbly and and uh, loving mercy and. Uh, and so she kind of she embodies that in all she does, and I learn from her every day. She's 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 the best. Great wife, great mom, great person. You you handle you handle things with like oh, such yeah. humility, yeah. and like you make um, life like um, seem effortless in some ways. And 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 I know that's not the case right now from a work standpoint. But you you just like you know you're impressive. Um, and, and I really mm. re respect your humility and I really respect your leadership, how you've handled all this. You just done it with like impactful class. Um, mm. I'm impressed. And, and you, I mean, I'm, I'm, you, you're itching to say something here. I mean, do you agree with that? <laughs> well, you know, it's not fair because I'm in love with the guy. Yeah. So, you, you see know, that's Sunday. not a fair question to ask me. I see him on Sunday. Why are you well, him? well, no. virtually we're there. Virtually we're there. Virtually. But, you know, just to follow that train of thought, uh, you know, this man, after August, right, took a leadership role and started a church. And yep. says, after August 12th. After August 12th. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to try to fix this. And he's doing a great job, right? And, you know, and we started this, and, you know, and I can't help not sharing my personal opinion uh, because I think UVA is making a serious mistake, and I've said it, and I we will continue do. to say that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know he's uncomfortable with saying it because he's a humble man, yeah. so, and we're, we're, we're very similar in that thing. But I was thinking as you guys were talking, you know what's the one thing all three of us absolutely have in common? We're guys? Nope. We married up big time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. yeah, we did. We married up big time. I was going to say, it's not the hair. <laughs> yes, you know. well, but yeah, we married yeah, up. Well, let's not go with the hair, okay? Uh, but on the question that Jerry asked you about the conversation you're having with your children, I would encourage yeah. you, if you have the time, and I know you're a busy guy, dig through the feed and listen to what my brother-in-law said, James Watson. Okay. Um, okay. As you know, both my brother-in-laws are African American. Um, uh, yeah. It's a biracial family, so it's a little bit of a it's a it's a conversation you're having. There's a little bit of a different conversation. It's the same, but kind of on steroids a little bit um, on it. Yeah. Uh, but how he responded to that question was, brought tears to my eyes and tears to Jerry's eyes. So I would encourage yeah. you to encourage you to reach out and and take a look at it. Um, yeah. Uh, We'll do. And on, I know, I know you got a hard stop at at ten forty, and and I, I I want to do this for the rest of the hour, but you're a busy guy. Uh, I just want to tell you, thank you for what you do. My family is in love with your family. Um, today is Juneteenth. Let's make it a national holiday, guys. This is not a difficult thing to do. It's a it's a it, it's a it'd be a very simple thing to do as one step to bring together, I think, anyway. Yeah. It's doable. Let's do it. Appreciate you guys. Love you, man. Really do. Paul Harris, you have a good one, man. Seriously, man. Thanks, Thank Jerry. you. Take care. Thank you. All right, take care. You do the same. Thank you, guys. All right, Paul Harris, boys and girls. Dr. Paul Harris, he is phenomenal people. Um, is the petition still circulating? I believe it's still circulating. If it is, sign the petition. So it's interesting. It was put To get that man tenure. Oh, for that, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we'll we'll put that in the feed yeah. for everybody to take a look at. Uh, but the, there's also a petition going around to make Juneteenth a national holiday, and it's interesting. It was started by a woman in Texas, African American woman, 94 years old. 94 year old woman got on the internet, got on a laptop, and started circulating it. And I think it's well over a million signatures. So it's a no-brainer. Uh, yeah. It's a no-brainer. Another no-brainer, and, and, and this is us saying it. I think the entire community is saying it by now. And if you guys agree, hammer the like button, share the show. Dr. Paul Harris undoubtedly should be tenured at the University of Virginia. Yeah, you know, I, you know, it's very hard for me not to give my personal opinion on, on well, that. But, but even, and that's the reason I asked the question, what does it mean and, and what's the process like that? Uh, you know, Regardless of my personal opinion, it's clear, he, from my perspective, he checks all the boxes. Oh, so, I mean, yeah. the, uh, leader? Yeah. 
run preacher of a church, started a church, right? Changing education. There you go. I mean, <laughs> I don't get it. This is like a slam dunk. <laughs> well, it's kind of like what we're going to talk about later about. This is the like t- you need oxygen to breathe. Yeah. Paul yeah. Harris should be yeah. tenured at UVA. Yeah. Well, my hope is is that there's enough conversation going on there that that whoever makes this decision, and I suspect at some level it's political. Yeah. You know, it's a subjective thing. Uh, it's not. I don't understand the process completely, but it's not like box A checks as box B checks as box C. You're done, kind of thing. So I, I'm, I'm sure there's some subjective decision making in the in the process. Nick Duke Senior watching the go. program. Hello, Nick Duke Senior. He says Paul Harris, humility plus humanity personified. Yeah. Um, Absolutely can't can't speak. Well, Tim Jones is watching from Fifeville. He says Dr. Paul Harris. An asset to Charlottesville, and I have signed that petition. Thank you for having him on the show, Keith and Jerry. Oh, thank you, man. So it's similar. You, you uh, if we can pivot a little bit sure. off, off of that, I, I'd like to try to tackle a little bit, and it might be a bit of a heady subject. The Tiger Fuel. Oh, very nice. Yes. Yeah. So Tiger Fuel, we're going to talk about. I like this topic. This yeah. one hits close to home. So, Let someone tag the. Uh, in fact. Sarah Whitney, this is where you should be watching from Tiger Fuels. You just saw the best. <laughs> Sarah Fuel, Sarah Whitney, tell Tiger Fuel and the Sutton brothers to watch what the distinguished gentleman is about to say. Should I give the background? Uh, so I was just it, okay. Our this is scary. Okay. Our chemistry. We, we you were about to say that. I was about to ask you to okay. do that. We didn't talk about this at all. No. And you're going to terrifying. Up, it's terrifying. We're finishing so. each other's sentences <laughs> right now. It's terrifying. All right. I'll get out of your you, way. You I'll s- do the who, what, when, where, why. You set it up, and then okay. I'll take okay. it. Okay. Okay. So um, Tiger Fuel is trying to build a market like they have at Bel Air or Mill Creek or Preston. They're trying to do it in Keswick off the Boy Tavern exit. Black and they have. Um, kind of a gentleman's agreement in place with the owner of the property whose name is Fraser White. And Mr. Fraser White has owned the property for generations, since the 70s, I believe. And I believe it's a 40-year land lease that they have in place for this deal. And Mr. White has a buy right commercial usage of this property where he could get a big box brand to come there. Instead, he wanted a local company called Tiger Fuel to bring their market, and he wanted the community to influence what the development was going to be like. Before all this could happen, Tiger Fuel needed to get a special use permit from the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors this week. Unfortunately, and this is what I'm about to shut up, and we're going to hear from the genius, Keith (laughs) Smith, who does this for a living. Hold it. Hold it. I got a high IQ and I'm a genius? Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors has six members on its board, and it went 3-3 for the special use permit, and because it was a tie, the even number board denied the permit, and now Tiger Fuel, who's been working on this since February of 2017 does not have the green light to build the market at oh. Boy Tavern. No, they got worse than that. They got a red light. They got a red light. They got to stop. They got pretty much not going to happen, right? Yeah, so... Uh, you this know, is I'm, your ballpark. Yeah, I'm, I'm u- uniquely maybe qualified to talk about this. Um, you know, on top of general real estate, um, I'm a recovering development builder. I've actually been countless times at the podium in front of every one of these juris- local jurisdictions and... And on the side, I do a little bit of consulting around the state. I'm, I'm you have them watching now. Sarah Whitney, I'm tuned in. We're yeah, watching. Yeah. We appreciate your support of the market at Boyd Tavern. Tiger Fuel has a 40-year ground lease on the property. It is zone commercial. We are watching you guys. Got it. So uh, what I really want to do is get into the technical end of it because I think it's important for folks to understand what a 3-3 vote really means, right? So I'm... I'm I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. I'm not going to um, disparage the no votes or the yes votes or you know what people actually feel on Black Cat or didn't feel. It was a very passionate debate. This is more of a technical conversation I'd like to have. And I've been preaching this probably for 30 some odd years that this is exactly why you don't want to have an even board. Amen. You know, and what that really does, so everybody un- understands this, the, the way the, the legislation has written the laws on this subject, if it's a tie vote, it's an automatic no vote. So it doesn't really matter what the subject is. 
the no side of an equation automatically gets an extra vote. And when you end up, and I've been pushing this, and and you're again, saying the no side automatically gets an extra vote because a three three tie means you don't get it. A three three a tie or whatever. If it's eight, it's four four. Whatever yeah. it is, as long as it's an even number, the, when it becomes a no vote, excuse me, when it becomes a tie vote, it's a no vote. So the the no side of any topic has an advantage. Has an extra vote. Yeah. Right. In sense. essence, it gets an extra vote. And you know, and. and Every one of the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors I respect highly. I work with them on a regular basis. Their decisions they made was the decisions that they made. I, I respect that. But what I don't understand is why we don't have a five or a seven Albemarle County Board. And the, the jurisdictions that I work in that I do that, that have odd numbers, what it does is it forces the, the board to make a decision, right? So in essence, what happened, no decision was made, therefore it's a no vote. Mm -hmm. And then on the technical side of it, uh, Tiger Fuel cannot bring this application back for, a year. for one year. Yeah, that's nuts. Now, why would that's, that just stifles entrepreneurial creativity? Yeah, and I'm sure you know if you dig into the reasons why, to some level, that there's a very logical reason why on that. And again, I'm not pointing fingers at this. I just want to kind of talk through the technical end of things. Sure. Um, the the. But they, so it's interesting, they can't bring the same exact application back. That doesn't mean they can't change their application and reapply. What require, what constitutes a change? Great question. It's an interpretive thing. So, so is a change knocking 100 square feet off the footprint? It's an interpretive thing. It's an interpretive thing that the zoning administrator for that particular jurisdiction gets to make. My gosh. Now. That's frustrating. Now. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a possibility they can kind of retweak it and, and bring it back and make it look different or, you know, and, and that I'm sure is what the folks at Tiger Fuel are looking at. Uh, I mean, if I was them, that's what I'd be looking at and trying to see what we can do to, to change it. On the other hand, you know, do I want to go through three more years of brain damage? Right, right. Right, right. So, right. Um, why, why, why would, why, one man's perspective, I'm playing devil's advocate with you, three plus years of doing this. Sure. Wouldn't you just throw your hands up in the air with Almoral County and say, you guys don't want incremental tra ta uh, tax revenue. You guys do not want $100,000 a year of new money that's going to come from this, ta this market. You guys don't want 24 new jobs. And you don't want the job growth from the supply chain of building something like this over an 18 to 24 month period of time. To heck with you, Almoral County. I'm going to go to another county that is more pro-growth sure. that would incentivize us sure. to come and bring our business there. Because there's counties in Central Virginia, and you're the smart guy. You know this better than I do. There's counties in Central Virginia that will throw incentives for them to do this, where Albemarle County literally says, you're the devil. Not, not, you know what I yeah. mean? Not that, but no. you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I refuse to go there. Right? It's you so know, you know commercial. That, so. Yeah, but you know, the people that make that decision for or against, they believe that for, for their very good reasons, and I would never disparage the reason they made the decision. It's the technical part of it that I wanted to have this conversation about, that, that if there was five board members or seven board members, there's gonna have to be a decision. There's gonna have to be a flat out no or a flat out yes. But this tie tie vote is BS. Yeah, it is and uh, some jurisdictions. Stephanie Wells Rhodes, who's watching the show right now, also thought the same. We and you were on the call. You I stayed was. up and listened. I she did. stayed up and listened. I stayed up and listened. I did. We went all the way through, and to hear a tie three three. Sure. I mean, that is just like uh, yeah. almost like for people that care about this, that live in the area, that's like a punch in the gut. Well, you know, uh, you know, that's my. You know, ear candy, right? I, I listen to these board meetings and attend them, and and all this stuff, along with Neil Neil Williamson, who who's does, watching, who does a great job on on providing information on that stuff. Can I ask you a technical question? Sure. Okay, you have a consultancy that helps entrepreneurs launch their businesses, especially if they need some kind of zoning change. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this you're a hell of a lot smarter than I am. This particular piece of property has a commercial zoning distinction, right? Mm -hmm. Big box brand could conceivably go there. So, uh, can you walk me through the di the differences of a commercial zoning distinction where a big box brand could go versus a market going? 
So I have not dug into that particular parcel in the particular zoning, but, but I think what you're asking me is, what's the difference between a buy right process and an SUP process? And a special use permit. Yeah, special use permit process. So buy right is exactly what that word means, buy right. So you would open up the ordinance, and inside the ordinance, it tells you what you can do and what you can't do. Very, matter of fact, zero input from the public. For it's, buy right. For buy right. It is a process. So it is a process by which you work with the, the planning professionals, engineers, VDOT, and you go through this process. That's, a, that's buy right. So whatever this particular parcel's buy right use is, is what it can be. Uh, and I, and, and I, listening to some of the folks on the phone call, you know, some were 100% correct. This means now the, the public gets zero input. SUP... This is a special use permit. It has the board of supervisors or the jurisdiction. Listens to the citizens. Uh, that's not what, what I was going to say. Can impact conditions. They can force conditions on it. So you're going to do an SUP on the Basically what they're saying is you have to turn your lights off at a certain time. You have a limitation on the water that you can use. You have a limitation on the traffic that can go to and from there. Those are limitations that come with the special use permit. So it becomes a negotiations, in essence, between the jurisdiction and the applicant and the jurisdiction. And, and this is very, very high level, you know, because of the changes in the proffer laws at the state level. It used to be that if you were to rezone something, then the, the jurisdiction could ask restrictions of you. That's not allowed any longer. So when an SUP, that's what happens. So you are a jurisdiction, I'm an, application, an applicant, and I want to do this coffee cup. And you can say, well, we want all these tops on your coffee cups to be white instead of black. Now, either I accept that condition or I don't. If I accept that condition, then that gets marked off. And then the jurisdiction can say, well, we want you to double cup every coffee that you send out your door plus a white thing, are you willing to do that? And that's why that three-year process took so long was this back and forth on that end of it. And, you know, part of, the, part of the time problem, and I'm about ready to talk about another project, is what has happened in that three-year period? Guess what we have? Marketplace conditions have changed. A, what's the other thing that changed? Um, new supervisors. Bingo. And because we have new marketplace conditions that change, the cost of construction perhaps is not the same when they anticipated the project three years ago. And because we have new supervisors running Almaro County, the relationships that were established three years ago to get this project going, perhaps those aren't the same relationships that are in place today. That's exactly right. And as a result, you get a 3-3 three, three tie, three well, years of hard work, you know, uh, down the drain. Yeah. The result of the 3-3 three, three tie, I'm not going to get into, right? I mean, uh, and I, we've... Can I ask you this question? Sure. Don't get me into trouble. I'm not. You can go anywhere you want. <laughs> okay. You're a very good talker. You know yeah. one of your skills is talking. Yeah. Fraser White, owner of the property, mm -hmm. goes to Keith Smith and his consultancy yeah. and say, I had a 40-year ground lease with Tiger Fuel to make this business happen. Almaro County Board of Supervisors didn't let me happen. What should I do now, Keith Smith, with this property? Yeah, so what I would tell them is, is let's grab the, the, the ordinance and open it up and find out what your buy right uses is and then fit, fit whatever you want to do. To, be, to use a term that I'm not a big fan of, go the path of least resistance. Go to the path of least resistance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when it comes to local government. Well, it's just, it's just a business decision he needs to make. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not an uncommon thing. I, I, I was, there's a project that I helped a, a client recently get approved out in Fulvana County, um, the Colonial Circle, and, and it's underway. It's 325 residential units, 80,000 square feet of, of commercial. Is this is Chris Henry's? No. Okay. So um, uh, this is for another, another client of mine. Uh, but in any event, uh, there's a roundabout that's getting built there that we donated. It took us six years to get from the start to the point that the actual roundabout's six getting years. built. and. And, you know, thank, thank God we, we've got buyers for apartment complexes and so forth and so on. But it takes six years. And we went through um, 
two or three board members because they kind of every two years change. And when that happens, you got to start back over again, reestablish relationships and, 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 and move it along. But we ultimately got it, got it passed. And uh, they're, they're, they're literally building the roundabout now. It'll be done in um, November, October, November. There's 15 to 18,000 cars a day that goes that will go through that, and uh, this commercial is right at the edge of it. So it, it, it's exciting. It's going to be some good stuff. Out That's there. awesome. That's awesome. One more question. You've, I've learned a lot from you so far on this topic here. Um, from your standpoint as a real estate professional, if the buy right use allows a potential big box there. And who's to say a big box is going to want to come to that area anyway? Because it's not exactly a ton of density. Let's be straightforward. So if a big box goes there with the buy right use, what has a greater impact on land values, plus or minus, a big box or a market? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I did not dug into the numbers on that end uh -huh. of it. I don't even know what the buy right uses are for that parcel. Uh, I'm, you know, I have not had the opportunity to do that. I just knew this was coming up and I wanted to listen to the conversation and I wanted to take the opportunity today to talk about the technical end of, of, of things. Um, you know, you would have to really dial into very specific, okay, if it's, I think the conversation was about um, uh, Dollar General, yes, right? Sir. So, you know, I would have to really dig into those numbers before I said, yeah, Dollar General has more value than... But on paper, as, as just common sense yeah. people, would it not seem that that would depress land value and home values having a Dollar General down the street from you as uh, opposed to a low? I mean, I'm just as a reasonable guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that, to be, that, that is the truth, truthful response. You know, I'd have to dig into it. There's a Dollar General out of Lake Monticello, and it hasn't hurt those dollar values on it. But there's a Dollar General maybe someplace else that it does. So I, it could be very site-specific. I just, I'm not going to make a blanketed statement without doing the homework on, on the data. That's but I know, I know this much, though. The revenue to, to the county will be better with a Tiger Fuel than a Dollar General, because I think you're going to end up with more, uh, more sales volume. Yeah. More right? gross revenues. More gross revenues. From that location, from a market, than a, tiger, than a Dollar General. In my opinion. I think so, too. You know, I, you know, I mean, you've got the gas, you've got the food, and you've got the convenience piece. Yeah, so you know, all these different taxes that would, you know, sales tax, food tax, so forth and so on, would be coming back to the county. That's definitely true. And on top of that, your sales cycle is a lot shorter yeah. with the market than a, trying to find a big box that there's no relationship in place with. Yeah. So you get the revenue faster. Absolutely. And then you're also dealing with a local company, which is you. You can pick up the phone and call the dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As and opposed to Susie Q, who's the manager, who doesn't even know who the decision maker is for the Dollar General company. Well, to turn this back to real estate, right? Um, it's... The, what we talk about all the time on this show and we talk to our clients about, it's really the difference between using a internet lender. Ooh, I like where you're going right? with this. A rocket mortgage versus Scott Morris. Versus Scott Morris. Call Scott locally as opposed to rocket online because you can talk to somebody like Gordon Sutton as opposed to Susie Q manager who doesn't even know who the decision maker is at Dollar General's boardroom. That's exactly right. So we are, uh, Scott's helping us with a deal. Nice right? done, Keith. Thank you. <laughs> is helping us with a deal on that, that, um, you know, uh, the, the, the buyer decided to do an internet thing. It fell apart at the last minute. And, and now we're, now we're, 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 I'm on the phone with him at 530 in the morning. He's my new 530 call, by the way. Oh, good. It's not you anymore. Scott, Scott takes your 530. But, he, but you know, he's a Marine, so he's, he's used up. to, he's up, he's used to being up. So, plus he's got little people in his life. So, so he's up on it. But th just to put that in perspective, just from a logical thing you know i'd rather pick up the phone and say hey it's the same thing with with if you're borrowing money to do commercial right yeah it's the same thing for anything yeah, yeah, yeah. right relationships matter right anything relationships matter the relationships get things fixed um you know we, we uh, just along those lines we had an uh, an issue um over at nassau street with the land trust there was a sewage blockage on it and so forth and so on and uh you know uh the the we work closely with the city which my hat's off to the city you know i want to take a minute and talk about this people have been given a hard time on the city on this the utilities department on the city with the land trust and 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 i hope somebody's listening it was freaking 
awesome. Got them on the phone, Zoom calls, they've been great to work with. But to talk about this difference between internet and an actual person, right? So there's four properties over there. One of them had an internet insurance company. The three of them had actual people. The three of them that we picked up the phone and got people in and got it fixed and got things repaired or done, the internet person, we still can't figure out who to talk to. And this has been going on for two months. So talking about Tiger Fuel versus a national company, to me, I'd rather pick up the phone and call t Tiger Fuel. That's just my personal That's a opinion. good take. It seems like common sense and a no-brainer to me. Well said from the distinguished gentleman right there, Keith right. Smith. You have a couple of I's and T's you want to dot and cross, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I really didn't have anything planned for today. I didn't, I didn't bring any statistical data in it. I, I just really wanted to take an opportunity to talk to my dear friend Paul and, and promote um, his tenureship. I, I, I wanted to use this canon that we've created, that you've created here, to help him, help him do that and talk about uh, Juneteenth a little bit um, and then have this Tiger Fuel conversation i'm a little passionate about it um again i don't want to uh, you're not hating yeah no i, I, I don't i don't have a single i don't hate anybody yeah or anything. i know you're not i know you you're know, not. and i and and i again i come from a unique position yeah you know the gentleman that well, you you've seen you've worn every hat that's involved in this equation well i don't know about that but but uh the gentleman that that was the applicant for the tiger few did it did it um remotely and I was listening to it. I'm going, man. Gordon, I yeah. I wish I could have did that. because. Oh, when you were doing your stuff. Oh, or when I represent somebody. Because you sit in that podium, right? And you have the, you have the, 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 the city council or the, or the whatever or the elected supervisors. or the supervisors sitting there. And you're sitting there. And you're sitting at that podium. And one person after one person after one person. And, you know, and you're trying to do the right thing in your opinion wait you're saying when you're up there and you're trying to get an application through and one person after one after another in person says for lack of better phrase throws shade on your application you're saying in person that wears on you it does yeah is that what you were saying uh, i mean i've had people threaten my family in Pu person in public yeah, what? yeah sure yeah. that's nuts yeah you know it's okay is that the not in my backyard mindset it, it, there was a lot of nimbyism well, on the call. You heard it. Well, as you know, I'm in favor of yeah, uh, you're yimbies. A, yeah. Yimbies. Yes yeah. in my backyard. You're a yes in my backyard. Yeah. Um, look, but I, any time I've ever stood at that podium and somebody either personally attacked me or whatever, I never held it against them. They, they believe this. It's, 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 they're passionate about it, and I respect that, but don't disparage me and my family <laughs> yeah. oh yeah i've had oh i had people threaten me and uh, i had people follow my wife and children and you know it, it uh, well it, on a on a on a on a different topic yeah yeah let's go uh, to a different topic on a different, hey! on a different topic <laughs> let's have fun we wish the uh we wish the tiger fuel people luck we, yeah. we they're yeah. certainly ambassadors of the community sure. um it was it was it was uh dis disheartening to watch it play out, Keith. It was disheartening. So let's do something positive. Let's do it. Let's talk about the summer market. I huh? would love to hear about the summer market. You certainly hope it's red hot, my friend. Well, yeah. And if you need a realtor, guys, there's undoubtedly what a, a team that's going to go to bat for you like no other is this man and his wife, Keith and Yona Smith. I mean, plus, they, plus the, I'm telling everybody that's watching is other real estate yeah. agents. Trust a real, a trust a, a trusted advisor. There you go. Especially the ones named Keith and Yona. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> summer market. So you, you, I went there with Paul. You're going there with me. I said it. Not but, you. Uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Slide, slide four, if you don't mind. So let, let's let's talk a little bit about um, the summer the summer market, right? So the summer is the new spring, and as we talked about earlier, one of our new premier. Sponsors is Interstate Pest Control, which look Interstate at this. Interstate Pest and it Service pop, Companies. Pop, pop, popped up. So, there's the, and, and there's just a quick little 10 things that get your house ready. And, um, you know, if you give a phone call to Yona and I or any of the real estate agents, they have a Rolodex of folks that help them. Interstate's a great, great uh, source for this type of thing. So, if you just go to slide five, if you don't mind, Judah. And a lot of this stuff is, is basic 
stuff yeah, but that it's you do. It's good to review, right? Make sure your gutters are clean. I, I will tell you, um, in home inspections, that's like the number one thing: clean gutters. So before you list your house. Clean the gutters. Every home inspector is going to look at the gutters and the fascia boards underneath them. There you and go. And a little rotting fascia boards, all of a sudden, is an indication of the overall maintenance of the home, even though it could be a little rot on one fascia board. They're very important. So I'm kind of glad you went there. So I may be speaking from personal experience. Uh, it sure sounds like it. <laughs> You need a hug or some virtual no, hug? No, the facial boards. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah, they're yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, it's because they're so visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but you, you kind of hit on something. So one of the things that Yona and I do, and I'm a little bit uniquely qualified because my contract is licensed and I've built 600 houses. Yeah, you're class A contract. And then when I take a look at a house before we list it, I can rattle off a bunch of things. Say, hey, we need to fix this, 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 and this. Let's get it done before before we list it because we want to make this path. You know, there's two really big hiccups in a transaction. One is the, f the home inspection process, right, that tends to possibly have relationships go sideways. And then the, the financing, which we talked about. And, and that's why having somebody like Scott and a trusted advisor in it. So make sure your gutters are clean. Make sure, you know, siding, we talked about it, power washed. Make sure things are painted, um, you know, Something silly. Clean your windows. Make sure your screens are cleaned. Personally, I like taking screens out and putting them in a crawl space or an attic. That's it what makes, we did. It makes the house pop. It makes it look bigger. It makes it pop, yeah. yeah. Um, check your hot water heat heater, any circulation on it. Um, one of the things Yona and I do um, with our listings, we provide a home warranty on it. So if something like that gets caught during the listing, they can fix the hot water heater. You know, get an eyeball on your roof. Make sure it's not leaking or if your shingle is missing. And, again, these things are going to get caught by home inspection. And, again, Interstate can help you with that. Um, not everybody has a sprinkler system, but if you do, so make sure it's working, right? Um, landscaping, you know, just a couple hours of cleaning the place up. I mean, you're in a branding business, right? Yeah. You know, make it look pretty. Put some we lipstick on it. We are in the business of managing perception, and if you're strategic on how you manage perception, you can almost make it seem like it's reality. Well, I'm not talking about doing anything. You're talking about curb appeal. Curb and appeal. Curb appeal is perception. Well, you know, and it's funny because um, it takes the average buyer seven seconds to oh, make yeah. a decision. Yeah, you know, you know immediately. Yeah. You know immediately from the outside whether it's, okay, this passes the eye test. And then when you get inside, from my experience, you find out in like 20 seconds. It, it takes seven seconds for yeah. somebody to say go, no go. I mean, they may not actually say that, but they've made their decision. Right. They made their decision. But, you know, we talk about this all the time when we talk to folks. I mean, if, if it ain't looking good from the street, they're not getting out of the car. Right. So we need to, we need to make that front yard pop. Um, foundation's a little bit technical. This is something that I can help you take a look at. Um, you know, uh, again, from my expertise, you know, if we've got cracks or something that isn't right, we want to get in front of it before we list it. And if there's an issue, we need to make sure we correct it sure. before we list it. Um, take a look at the crawl space. If you're on a crawl space, make sure you don't have any white stuff growing. Right, and pest, interstate pest control can clearly help you with that. They're super great at doing mold remediation or fungi remediation. They're, they're probably the best in town. They are to do it. And then you know, bathrooms, something silly. You know, I can't tell you how many home inspections lists will have the toilets rocking. That's two screws. You tighten it, you're done. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's whatever you can do pre-listing. To, to make that home inspection list as minimal as possible will make the transaction go as smooth as possible on the back end. So I just wanted to take a minute or two and, and cover that. And, and then uh, that's all I really had today. Interstate Pest and Service Companies, guys, a home's best friend. The mortgage applications, did you see the story this I week? I did, I did actually. I mean, they are going through the roof. Interest rates at an all-time low. I yeah. don't think in, 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 from a generational standpoint or from an in-your-life standpoint, guys, you may never have interest rates this low in your entire life ever again. That's probably, I could say that, right? Uh, my first house was 18%, so right. I'm, I'm liking 3 and 4 have you? My buddy just got a sub 3. Yeah. yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. That's nuts. What'd you make of the the spike in mortgage applications? Well, I have to talk to Scott. I have an opportunity to do that yet. I wanted to make sure if it was new purchases or refis. Ah. So that's 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 I got to drill into into that. My hope is it's purchases. Right. Right. Um, I suspect it's kind of down the middle 
a little bit on on refis and that because there's just simply no inventory, right? right. And and uh, you know we, we we talked a little bit about getting your house ready, and if you're watching the show and you're thinking about selling. To play over what Jerry just said, now's the time to do this. Right. You guys want to sell your home and you want to sell your home quickly. There's no competition on the market now. I cannot think of a better time to sell your home then and now. Yeah. And then, you know, you're also on the buy side, right? You know, with the interest rates being low, you know, you actually can maybe get a both side of the trans, you know, both uh, a buy and a sell. Some people don't want to sell because they don't know where they're going to go. Sure. And interest rates help that affordability index right you can afford a little bit more house with the lower interest rate on it but um yeah i i, I, I last i think it was tuesday or friday i wasn't feeling so good about our bet but i think i'm feeling better today well, yeah. about it. when i saw that mortgage applications yeah. it spiked now i didn't consider the uh the delta between the refis and the new apps so i so, want to look into that as well even if it's split down the middle it's, it's still, still a good it's sign. still a huge number it's still a great sign i mean now it's just a matter and, and and you've been saying this the whole time now it's just a matter of saying guys it's 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 okay yeah. to sell your home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's confidence, right? It's it's are, are you ready to do this? So we 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 we've got a couple of listings coming up, Yona and I, and we spend a lot of time in our conversations virtually or at a respectful distance, explaining our process and how we're going to keep your family safe. And 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 every realtor that's a member of CAR is doing the same. Is doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. And you know, CAR's in front of this, and CAR's constantly giving us. Um, helpful tips to, to go ahead and do it but michael guthrie says keith smith fantastic tips on helping get a home ready to sell that's from the chief executive there officer merg himself Th michael guthrie thank you michael i love michael what, what, what'd you call him before? merg is his nickname i i've known him for eight years i did not know that. merg is his nickname isn't that right michael merg? eight or nine years I, yeah I, I believe and correct me if i'm wrong um one of his grandchildren called him merg or mergy and it stuck is that right michael i think that's right Oh. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. I'm starting to think he loves you more than me. I did not know that. Well, he, I think he's told you that. <laughs> he really? Maybe uh, I just listen a little bit. Uh, 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 no, I listen well. Oh, Judah, wait, Judah wants to talk on the mic. He's turning his mic on. Well, hold on, Keith. Judah's talking. Uh -oh. oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, Judah's talking. <laughs> Studio camera, Judah's talking. My guess is it's short for Mr. G. Uh, well, we'll see. Um, he's, that's the first. Judah. In can you say more stuff? No, come on. Put it on studio cam. Talk. Sorry, that's it. Okay, that's it. Michael says it's correct. Merg. I'm just, I'm just like. Judah's talking. A, a year and a half I've been sitting in, the, in, more than that in this chair. Eight years I've been working alongside Judah. Judah speaks. Judah talks. <laughs> Who knew that? <laughs> Judah, can you, can you stand up and go to the studio camera and let everyone see your handsome mug? Can you wave into the camera? He's not going to do it. Can we, can we please do that? This guy keeps Keith and I in line here. He is a uh, phenomenal person, um, and he keeps us in line. I think he said something about this morning. You know, I just give up. <laughs> yeah, uh, Michael Guthrie says it's his initials, MRG. There you go. Yeah, that makes MRG. sense. MRG. MRG. Yeah. Um, good show. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wanted to really uh, give love to Paul. And, oh, please, guys. And I, I was conflicted on should we talk about the Tiger Fuel thing because I didn't want to get into technical weeds, but hopefully I explained it in such a way oh, that so well. that it was um, you know approachable and understandable. But I, I think I think a tie tie vote is is injustice. It's like a tie tie vote is like it's like this. It's like the University of Virginia football team playing Virginia Tech football in the Commonwealth Clash, and the game ends in a draw. Yeah. You know, a tie tie vote might even be worse than that because the game didn't even end in a draw for Tiger Fuel. Yeah. They had another year of go back to the drawing board. Stephanie Rhodes says Judah Wickhauer is the man. Oh, yeah. And you have been heard and seen. From there Stephanie. you go. <laughs> Judah Wickhauer. I'm actually having other people on the feed say this as well. Grace just said Judah Wickhauer, well done. Michael Guthrie says Judah Wickhauer is the best. Judah's got some, Judah's got some fans out there. Maybe we ought to get him on a seat here. Raymond Beal says, watch out for Keith Smith, Jerry. <laughs> he's a hugger. I know he's a hugger. <laughs> Keith Smith hugs me every single morning. Mary With, with masks. Mary with masks. Francis Weiland. She says, good oh, yeah. morning, cousin Keith and oh, Jerry. Yeah. I love your show. Oh, yeah, the cuz. Hey, cuz. Mary Francis Weiland says, this show's fantastic. Yeah. Where's your cousin watching? Oh, oh God! I'm gonna. You should know where your cousin is. Yeah, yeah. It's I got so many of them. Are you so I many uh, Maryland. I, no, hold it. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. You got to tell me where you live again. I forgot. The hardest question I asked Keith Smith today was not about zoning or special use permits <laughs> or the my value family. proposition of my a family, family dollar. It's where his cousin is living. <laughs> Mary Francis, where are you living right <laughs> yeah, now? Yeah. Put oh. it in the comment section. Thanks for embarrassing me in front of 253,000 people. You. Thank you. You killed this show. No, we have a, a video to close with, too. We right do now. have a video, but now I got to figure out how to get you back. I'm going to work on that for Tuesday. <laughs> Let me see if I can put my cursor over her name and I can see where she's from here. I'm actually going to your page right now, Mary Francis, and doing a little Facebook stalking to see if I can find where you're from. Oh, your page is on lockdown. She does not have where she lives. Yeah. Good job, Mary. Good job. Good job. What's your plan for the weekend? Um, work, actually. Got a busy weekend. Uh, working on uh, most of the day tomorrow, a little bit Sunday morning, and um, I'm going to have my parents over and make my world-famous uh, sausage and peppers. Oh, little sausage I had and sausage and peppers I just last went night. The, the Marie Bet. I before I came here, just a Marie Bet, and ordered six loaves of baguette bread because that's how do you have sausage and peppers is with baguette. And well, the reason you like the baguette is because in case it gets soggy, the baguette has the outer crunchy crust to manage the fluid from the sogginess. Is there that you go. why? Duh. Yeah, because otherwise <laughs> the sandwich crumbles and the the sausage and peppers crumbles. And there's nothing worse than eating a sandwich or sausage and peppers on a bun and have the bread. Crumble. Oh, so I do. I don't do it on a bun. Oh, you don't. Oh no, no. Then what no. do you use the baguette? Is is it is the dipping sauce? Oh, you dip it in the. Oh yeah, yeah. You dip it in the juice. I dip it in the juice, man. My, okay, I, I make world class sausage and world peppers. Class. World class. World class. Wow, the distinguished world gentleman. Class. It's generally a lot of beer. A couple for me, one for the peppers, a couple for me, one for the What's pepper. the beer you're drinking? Eh. Depends what you got in the fridge. Uh, actually, I'm a Heineken fan, believe it there or not. There you go. That's a good beer. Yeah, I'm a Heineken fan. That's a good beer. And uh, There we go. I can't drink anything hoppy. I, uh, I'll tell you what. You did a heck of a job today. Thank you. Thank you. I learned from you. Well, thank you. I, 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 I enjoy our time together. Me I really too. do. Every day. Me too. Judah Wickhauer, um, you're making more friends on the stream with people saying, now, this is from Chris, so that's the guy who's the back of the head I see all the time on the show. Yep, that's the back of his head. You just is that, Chris, that right Chris who? That's from Chris Jones. Oh, yeah. That's the back of the head I see all the time on the show. Yeah. All right, Judah, we have a video we got to play, right? We have that ready to rock and roll? Um, before we do, guys, I have spent almost two years getting to know this gentleman and Keith and Yona Smith, and the most challenging sometimes process of your life may be the home you buy or sell. And if you need a trusted advisor in this game, Keith and Yona will go to war and back for you. I literally have seen it. I literally have seen it. So the Yes Team Realtors, I'm saying this, he's not saying this, because Dr. like Dr. Paul Harris, he's too humble to say it. Pick up the phone or get on your keyboard and email Keith and Yona. Um, thank you, my friend. It's always a pleasure, my friend. Truly, truly. I'll buy you a razor next week. I truly, he doesn't <laughs> like my beard either, honey. You hear him. He, Dr. Paul Harris said, is that what's grown on his face? Mrs. Miller, I agree. <laughs> when, I, when I hugged him, it hurt. <laughs> I don't know why he was hugging me and having my face scratch. When uh, I had a mask on. <laughs> Judah Wickhauer in three, in two, in one. Mm -hmm. 